So I'm going to do some more hewing. Uh, I wanted to test out the Phantom Bevel jersey that I have a couple of videos about and I wanted to demonstrate hewing with this long handled double bevel broad axe and I wanted to try out some hewing with this uh, two and a half pound boys axe that I hung the other well about a week ago now. Uh, because I've never done any hewing with an axe quite that short of a handle and with that small of a bit. I'm pretty confident that it will work fine. But uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show some more hewing with a couple of different axes and just to demonstrate that you don't have to have a broad axe, but I'm also going to demonstrate hewing with a uh, double bevel broad axe here, tie hacker style. Um, this broad axe is a Philadelphia pattern, I think, or a Pennsylvania pattern. I'm a little fuzzy on my broad axe patterns. And I got it off eBay. It's one of my few axes that I bought off eBay a long time ago. And when I got, when it arrived, I realized they, someone had reprofiled it to be double bevel. And I didn't, at that time, think you could do good hewing double bevel. So I just left it as an unhung head for a really long time until I saw... On sex channel. If you want to see a amazing axe professional, I highly recommend On Sex Channel because he he's in the Czech Republic and maybe his videos don't have the greatest video resolution, but that guy can do things with an axe that make me want to die. And he does a lot of hewing with a very, very large, long-handled broad axe. Um, and it was really inspirational. And I, I changed a lot of how I hew after I saw what he's able to do with those amazing axes that he's got. And uh, so, yeah, I, I wanted to have an axe set up the way Onsex axes are. And I, there was no way I could get my whole, my hands on a medieval uh, European replica hewing axe. So I had this double bevel broad axe and I just hung it with this long handle. And um, it works fantastic. I love using this axe. It's my second favorite hewing axe after the axe I used in the last video, which is my favorite axe to do everything. So... Uh, yeah, let me just lay out this uh, timber and we'll make another piece of cribbing and I'll test out some axes. So, the last video I felt like we got good footage of the angle that the axe is coming in, but not actually because of the sun. The, the images of this, the cut surface was a little bit difficult to see. So I'm trying from another angle to see if we can get some different looks. Okay, so this is that long handle phantom bevel jersey. Gonna see how it works as a scoring axe. Works fine, but I expected it to.
So that's pretty much this products. I mean, this is a dinky little four foot piece of cribbing and I wasn't taking off much material, but I think you can see you can really move a lot of material pretty quickly once you get the hang of it. I wouldn't say I'm back in tune with this ax. I, you know, I need maybe a good 10 feet to get accustomed to how it behaves, but it's okay. I mean, I'm not super happy with how straight that surface is, but you know, I haven't picked this ax up in almost a year. So I'm gonna try and do this whole side with this little boy's ax and see how that goes. That'll be a very new thing. And that's pretty much gonna be the maiden voyage for this boy's ax, so I've never really used it before. So we'll see how it goes. And I have never hewn with an ax this small. That went okay.
that went really nice. Um, obviously it was a lot slower than with the broad axe, but I really did actually get a straighter surface, I would say. Um, I overscored quite a bit. This was digging a little deep. Um, and, you know, partly not used to the axe, you know, you got to Hewing with like three different axes on a tiny piece of wood, you're going to get some inconsistencies. But, I mean, some people like the overscoring look, and obviously it doesn't damage the functionality of this piece. So, yeah, that went pretty sweet. So there you go. Three different axes. You just fine. Um, it really is a matter of working with what you have versus waiting to buy, you know, the best, most expensive thing. Um, and the timbers don't care, you know, if it's like a rot gut Chinese uh, box store special or, you know, something like a Grand's Forest Brooks that's forged under a magical oak tree in Sweden. There we go. Another piece of cribbing. Nice, nice. Oh, what am I doing? I didn't do my string line. Just so eager.